It is with great pleasure that I introduce my friend and mentor, let me also say every Central Zone Athletic Director's mentor, Hugh Nestor, as we celebrate his induction into the Alberta Schools Athletic Association's Hall of Fame Athletic Director category. I can't think of one person not presently in the hall more deserving to receive this special recognition than Hugh. His commitment and dedication to Norway, CASA, and ASAA athletics were evident to everyone that met him. Hugh was a pillar in Central Zone Athletics starting in Roseland in September of 1979 before moving to New Norway in 1992, where he remained until his retirement in 2013. Hugh's amazing dedication was felt in New Norway along with numerous other schools, both in Central Zone and provincially, as he mentored many young athletic directors while hosting numerous zone and provincial events. He also served as a golf commissioner from 1996 to 2000. Further, when the ASAA hosted their first ever athletic director conference, which has turned into the AIAAA. Hugh was asked by executive director, John Payton, to present on the responsibility of them being an athletic director at a small school. John, like all of the athletic directors in the central zone, saw that Hugh was an embodiment of what a small school athletic director should be. This was always displayed at CASA meetings when side conversations always ceased when Hugh spoke up and talked about any range of issues. This is because of the incredible amount of respect each of the athletic directors had for him. His main philosophy is one that I, along with many athletic directors in the Central Zone, have followed for years. It was simply, what is best for the kids? This is a phrase that I heard Hugh say numerous times at CASA meetings and Zone events, and many will bring up since Hugh's retirement. Again, to hear, to hear a fellow nominator, Steve Searle from New Norway School say, he was direct and firm and at times was hard to work with. You had to check your ego at the door and revisit what you were doing or what you thought you knew. However, you always knew that his direction was coming from his heart and what was best for kids. He was adamant about the athlete experience as he ho played host to many provincial and zone events. All told, he was host to seven different provincial championships in the sports of golf, volleyball, basketball, and finally being known as the smallest school to ever host the cross-country provincials on its own. The knowledge that Hugh was hosting an event meant all participants knew the event would be incredibly well planned and executed. In addition, Hugh hosted many zone events, including 1A, 2A golf, zone golf consecutively for over 20 years. In addition, he hosted many other zone championships, too numerous to mention, across all of AAA's major sports. His leadership and dedication made each of the championships very memorable and successful for the participants and teams involved. In New Norway, Hugh developed a program that in terms of overall results was unmatched in the Central Zone's 1A category, while also consistently being recognized as one of the top 1A programs in the province. I'm a number guy, so here are the numbers. 57 zone championships, 28 silver medals, 14 bronze medals in ASW's major sports of cross-country running, volleyball, basketball, badminton, and track, along with golf. Over the 21 years, Q was the athletic director. A fellow nominator, Scott Peterson stated, Hugh set the gold standard for athletics in 1A schools in the Central Zone and throughout the province. New Norway School was a perennial powerhouse in 1A athletics, winning several zone and provincial championships, and whether it would be directly through coaching or drumming up interest in students, Hugh was the driving force behind that success. Some schools excel in certain sports, but the New Norway Spartans, Spartans excelled in all ASWA sports. No matter what the sport, you could ensure that you would cross paths with the Spartans at some point in zones or provincials, and they never would be an easy out. All this combined success meant unparalleled success within the Central Zone Supremacy Award, where under Hugh's guidance, the Spartans won an impressive 12 times in his last 15 years leading the program. This culminated into ASWA provincial success where five new Norway teams were crowned provincial champions along with nine silver medal performances and nine teams finishing with bronze. In addition, athlete, athletes attained 33 provincial medals in individual sports such as track and field where they earned 32 and badminton where they won one. This included eight gold, 14 silver, and 11 bronze. All these results were a direct result of Hugh's passion and dedication to encouraging kids to participate in ASWA sport and to represent their school with dedication, sportsmanship, pride, and humility. This is evident with New Norway being awarded the five provincial team sportsmanship banners. It was also evident in the size of the New Norway teams, both within the team and individual sports as you foster an environment where school participation and camaraderie was paramount. One thing that was always common during Hugh's time at New Norway was that no matter the sport, there would be an army of competitors from New Norway competing. It was still, it was and still is a way of life woven into the fabric of the school and it comes back to the legacy that Hugh manufactured. 
Many schools throughout the province are usually successful in one sport. New Norway under Hughes guidance was different because they were successful in just, weren't successful in just one sport. They're successful in every sport. All their schools and coaches in the central zone knew at the same point, if they wanted to compete provincially, they would need to go through New Norway. Again, just like Scott Peterson said. So it's a great pleasure that I now introduce Hugh Nestor, inductee to the ASAA Hall of Fame in the athletic director category. I, I think I would honestly say, I don't know that I ever made a choice to be an athletic director. Uh, when you were the uh, main phys ed guy in a small school, you were in charge of the sports program too. And uh, that meant any teams that were going, you uh, were responsible for a lot of the administrative details that went along with their opportunity to compete with other schools. And I readily accepted those administrative details because I wanted my kids to have the opportunity to chase their dreams. Um, somewhere along the way, somebody said to me, well, didn't you know you're an athletic director? I thought, well, that's kind of fun. I got a title. I got to get that made and put on my door. Fortunate to have uh, some very, very solid mentors who taught me uh, how, how to be an athletic director some of the things to do, some of the things to avoid. My first uh, job, I had, uh, I think, eight years to watch a very talented athletic director. And uh, I learned a lot and watched and, uh, and uh, imitated a lot of the things that I watched Ron Wilson do. Um, a lot of other mentors along the way helped me out. Um, I made mistakes and uh, they're a great teacher, as we all know. And um, the mistakes I made, I told myself, you'll never make them again. I always assumed that every other athletic director knew more than I did. I always assumed that every other coach could coach better than I did. Uh, I always assumed that anybody that I crossed paths with was probably more talented than I was. But I told myself the one thing nobody will ever be able to do is outwork me. For me, one of the most crucial uh, elements is a culture in a, in a school where students feel safe and are willing to try anything new. It was always interesting come cross country season and track and field season to hear the kids talking amongst themselves about, well, have you signed up yet? Well, you have to be in this. You have to sign up for that because that's where you're, you're really good at that. And the school needs you to be involved. And uh, I'll go sign you up if you don't have time. What had happened is we had created a culture where students felt protected. They felt safe. They felt that they could put their best foot forward and whatever the result was that they were going to be appreciated, um, not mocked, uh, not made fun of. And um, that belief structure in a building is pretty powerful. It's all about the kids. Um, sometimes uh, we as coaches uh, need to check our egos at the door. We need to ask ourselves who we're doing this for. Is it for me? Is it for my personal accolades? Or is it for the benefit of the students? And um, it is all about the kids. To be judged by a jury of one's peers and to be found um, accepted uh, is pretty powerful stuff. I'm humbled because of the people on that uh, wall of fame are people that I revered. And, and um, I was surprised. I never expected this. Um, I never considered myself in the same league as as a lot as the, the people on the wall of fame. And I'm very appreciative. Um, the Alberta Schools Athletic Association, thank you uh, for this award. Um, the ASAA is a, an organization with great integrity. Um, the, their mandate to create opportunities for kids to compete in a spirit of sportsmanship, um, 
all of the all of the positive benefits that come out of teamwork and all of those things. The ASAA is a fine organization and one of which I've always been very proud to be a part of. An award like this can only happen if you have the benefit of being in an environment where you have a tremendous amount of support. The staff of the schools that I've worked in have been immensely supportive. Um, a lot of our teachers coach. Whenever we put on a, a provincial event, every staff member was deeply committed to making it work. We're involved in heading up committees and all of those kinds of things. Um, this is a staff award that I get to have personally. So thank you. Big thank you to the students. Um, I was in the right place at the right time. I taught in two schools in my entire career and both of them bought what I was selling. Um, the, the school communities bought what I was selling. They wanted their kids involved. They trusted that their kids were going to be respected and, and returned safely. And um, so thank you to the communities for entrusting me with your children. Thank, uh, I'd, I'd like to thank the people who Zoomed in uh, at the uh, surprise ceremony last week. So much fun to see uh, hear from so many dear friends. The biggest thank you has to go to my family. Cheryl and the kids knew that dad was going to be gone a lot. That I was fine. Uh, they respected my passion for uh, my school and my sports program. And um, they know what I put into it. And um, so thanks to them too. I know I've missed so many people that I should have thanked, um, but where do you start and where do you stop? Here's where I stop. A legend. Uh, he's a legend in his own time. Start with the basics. Make sure you've got your registrations covered. Um, solicit help where you need it. Um, there's a wealth of knowledge out there. And um, athletic directors are not selfish people. Uh, they love to help. They love to see other people be successful. Um, we, we are pretty good at checking our egos at the door and saying, what's in the best interest for kids? Uh, if, if I can help another school build program and their students have a better experience because of it, then I've done my job. 